Hey, hey, welcome or welcome back. It is as always good to see you today. It is still Thursday. We are still catching up with Amber Lynn and we have her video that was uploaded two days ago on May 21st titled Major Health Scare, Why I Have Been Seeing Doctors Lately. Uh, she did tell us in her last video that she has been going to doctors. She's been having, uh, she's been worried about some things and that maybe she's finally going to tell us uh, what the issues are. Granted, again, as I keep saying, she's under no obligation to tell us anything, but if she does want to share, she is, of course, welcome to share whatever she wants, and she's welcome to not share whatever she wants. So, all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, if you are new here, first of all, welcome. Second of all, I do speed Amberlin up to 1.25 speed, because she does speak a little slowly. So, all that being said, let's hop on in. Hey guys, welcome to a new vlog. So today I have an appointment to get a CT scan. Okay, yes, and yesterday, the day before this day, she went to the med spa and started talking to them about taking Ozempic. So I want to explain kind of what's been happening, but I feel like I need to do just a real quick backstory of when I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. So I get asked a lot, like, what was my biggest symptom of that? It was the fact that I bled for over two years. I never went to a gyno because I did go to the ER a couple times. I did see an actual doctor a couple times. And every single time I'd go, they would say, yeah, this isn't normal. The people your size have really weird and irregular periods. And I was diagnosed. But every day or consistently for two years, that's a bit much than just being irregular. The UTI multiple times. So all of that fed into my delusion and it made it to where like the fear of going to a gynecologist was a lot stronger than me actually going. Long story short, I did have uterine cancer. I ended up getting a full hysterectomy, so I no longer have a menstrual cycle. So I don't bleed from down yonder. So if I ever notice blood from down yonder, something is wrong. So it was a little over two weeks ago, I went pee and I noticed there was blood in my pee. I went pee. Okay, so now, so this could be a UTI, possibly. This is very hard for me to talk about. I have cried a lot about this whole thing because I am scared. When I first saw it, I had so many memories flashback. Like it was straight up as if I was back in that uterine cancer journey. Mm. Like it hit me like this and I broke down. So after I calmed down a little bit, I realized, okay, you know what? This could be just a UTI. I ended up talking to my closest friends who have had UTIs. And I was like, what were you guys' symptoms? Like I was scared, obviously. And of course I went onto the Google and everywhere and everyone was like, yeah, you know, a little bit of blood in your urine, totally normal for a UTI. But like, I was having other symptoms. Like I had no pain, nothing. So I immediately knew, okay, I need to go to a doctor. Let's get this tested. Let's get put on some antibiotics, get this figured out. So I called around to a couple doctors. Okay, so that's why she was on the antibiotics and why she was quickly trying to find a new general practitioner, family doctor for herself. And one of them was like, we don't have an appointment open until next year. I was like, did I hear it's, it's crazy right now to try to get some appointments. Um, like last September, I scheduled an appointment for January with a new doctor. You're wrong. Oh, didn't hear that wrong. Literally next year. With new patients, it's very different, which I don't understand like the concept. Like there's only certain spots open for like new patients versus like doctors yeah. who have seen the same patient over and over. I don't understand it. I'm, I'm not meant to. Long story short, every doctor that I called, they were like, yeah, you can be seen in a couple months from now. Like there was none that was like urgent. And this felt urgent to me. I am a woman that has blood in her pee after having uterine cancer and a full hysterectomy four years ago. Like that felt urgent to me. So since I wasn't able to make a doctor's appointment, I did go to immediate care. They took my urine sample and I had no bacteria in it. it I have no UTI. It shows no signs of anything. So I explained to them, I did move to Oklahoma in October. I have not gotten a doctor yet. I did not make that a priority for myself and I should have, I understand that. So immediate care gave me a card for a doctor that probably would be willing to see me soon. So I was like, okay. So I ended up going home, calling, make an appointment and I did see that doctor. I took another urine test and again, it came back with no bacteria, nothing wrong, like no UTI. And that's when the topic of cancer came up. And the only way for them to see if it is cancer is if I get a CT scan, which is what I'm going to do today. Obviously there's also right. a chance that it's literally just kidney stones. I have had kidney stones in the past, but normally when I've had kidney stones, I did have pain. So the CT scan is actually gonna be looking at my pelvis and my abdomen. So the doctor did tell me, I am gonna put you on some antibiotics because you could have an infection that our urine test just is not picking up. So that is the reason why I'm on antibiotics. I'm terrified to say the least. I have broke down a lot because of this and I actively feel myself disassociating. Right now I just feel numb. 
I feel completely numb. And I know that if I wasn't in this like numb space, then I would be bawling my eyes out right now. But I think I feel sick. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, not picking up any, uh, any bacteria or anything for a UTI in the test. But like the doctor said, it could be, it could be something else. It could be just something innocuous you know hopefully it isn't anything more serious for in this uh weird disassociative area because when i'm like breaking down about something that i'm extremely worried about and something that i don't know the answers to and that i currently can't control i feel unaware of my surroundings really and i think right now i just need to be strong i need to go through the motions of what i need to do to figure out what this issue is so i can get it resolved so i can figure out a solution i still remember sitting there in immediate care and them coming back and telling me it was not a UTI because I really believed that it was. And when they told me that it wasn't, again, it was just like flashback after flashback after flashback mm -hmm. of everything I went through before I was finally diagnosed with uterine cancer. I just kept going back and forth. Like, do I want to tell you guys about this? Like I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed, but it's also like, there are things that your body does that. There wouldn't be anything to be embarrassed or ashamed about. I mean, uterine cancer granted, her weight could have played a role in it or it could not have. So it could be possible that her still being the size that she is could possibly play a role in that. I'm not sure what, where the cancer would be. I don't know how far any of the cancer cells would have spread. Um, I don't recall um, how far her particular type had gone but it was quite aggressive if I recall correctly so you are not in control over and I know a lot of people are like this happened to you because your weight this is your weight's fault this is your weight's fault not everything is because of my size and because of my weight so it's hard to come on here and feel like a normal human because I get so much like this is your fault this is your fault sometimes it's just literally not my fault I have fully taken the responsibility of me getting uterine cancer to begin with. Like that is completely my fault. I have had health professionals tell me, no, it isn't your fault, but it's like when you- There are types of cancer that could completely be your fault. Like lung, lung cancer if from smoking, you know, yeah, that's kind of your fault. Is it good? No, but still you kind of did it to yourself. Um, uterine cancer, from what I recall reading, it can be affected by weight but then you have people that aren't amberlin size that also get uterine cancer so it's not solely because of weight it could have been a factor but even if she was like 200 pounds she could have still gotten uterine cancer look at it and you figure out you know why did i get this it is my fault and i would have never gotten it mm. if it wasn't for my size and that's something that i you don't know that you do not know that she can't blame herself for that unless the doctor said yeah no a hundred percent because of your weight and if that were the case you would think she would have lost the weight <laughs> um because if she's thinking my weight is see that's kind of the disconnect here for me is if she's like oh my god because i'm 570 pounds i got cancer but then in the last what three years has done nothing to, I guess, almost, what, what, four years now, I guess, has done nothing to mitigate the return by losing the weight. That's, that's kind of where the disconnect is. If, if she were to truly believe my weight is the reason I got cancer, I would think that she would do more to lose the weight. I could be completely wrong. I mean, everybody's different, but. I want to all the time. The guilt that I feel about that is powerful. I can't. But it's not powerful enough for you to lose the weight. Blame everything on my size because not everything is my size's fault. Looking at. But now she's saying it's not. So she's, she's, she's blaming herself for it, but then she's saying, oh, but it's not my weight's fault. So which is it? bigger people and dismissing them constantly for whatever reason it's because of their weight it isn't fair and it is in a way dehumanizing but i'm not ignorant i'm not unaware of the fact that like 
being larger does cause a lot of health problems. It, it truly does. That is why I've never been health at every size. I don't believe that you can be this size and be healthy, but I do believe that bigger people such as myself, we do experience illnesses or sicknesses that isn't directly caused by our weight. So hopefully that makes sense. And that was like a big reason why, like I didn't want to come on here and talk about this because so many people dismiss me and the things that I go through just automatically, like whether it's health stuff, mental health stuff, just like day to day life stuff. I'm just like constantly dismissed and judged because of my size. Like, it goes on to like simple things like Amberlynn doesn't shower because of her size or Amberlynn doesn't walk her dog because of her size or Amberlynn doesn't clean her house because of her size. Like I have never given any indication. Yes, four years ago, for sure. 2019. Wait, that's that's literally five years now. 2019, five years ago. Yes, like those things were close to virtually impossible for me at the time. It's then like I have shown my growth. I have shown myself walking Twinkie. We have walked a mile together multiple times. I recorded a couple times. I talk about my showering. I talk about my cleaning. I talk about all these things. I've shown myself doing these things. And just because people, people will think that she's doing those things for like two seconds and then saying, I've been cleaning all day. And it's like, we said like two seconds. I personally, I don't care. I mean, she obviously showers. She obviously bathes. She does clean around her apartment because who else is going to do it? I mean, she lives alone. Um, I, I can't imagine her mom's coming over every day and cleaning her apartment for her. Her mom has her own life and has a job. So obviously Amberlynn is the one doing these things. We have seen her walking Twinkie. It's people just want to complain and bitch about things. I don't know why she's bothering to address these things. Of my size, people assume that I can't do these things. And that's just really unfair. I didn't want this video to be about my weight or my size, but I think that's something that's just like really, truly heavy on my mind and in my heart right now because no matter what I talk about it could literally be anything no matter what I talk about on this channel somehow the reaction I receive is always weight based it's always about my size I do talk about my weight a lot on this channel I'm about to start a new ozempic journey that's something that I'm always going to talk about but that doesn't mean that every single thing that I do in my life is directly a cause of my size I want to be a person with so many things about them and one of them just being that I'm super morbidly obese but instead I feel like the internet makes me just a super morbidly obese person with nothing else about her. I'm only ever seen for my size. I don't- Why are we bringing this up in this video? This was supposed to be about your health scare. That you said that you blame yourself for it, which would be your weight related issue, but then saying that it's not your weight's fault. So we have a contradiction here, of course. So which is it? And then if that were the case, then you would think you would have done more to correct the issue. So why are we now getting a lecture about, I'm not just my weight? Um, granted, a lot of people can't see past weight. A hundred percent agree, especially when it comes to Amberlynn. Uh, but why are we getting this lecture and in this particular video? I think anybody should ever be just seen because of how they look. I will forever be more than someone who is 500 pounds. Things happen to me, not because of my size, but because I'm simply human. And we all are. And we need to learn how to respect each other and stop invalidating and dismissing what people are going through. My God, I feel like I could ramble on forever. Um, I don't even, I don't know where this video, it like completely took a turn. I don't know where it went. Long story short, I'm about to go to I a don't CT either. scan. I'm about to start a vlog for you guys. I knew this was going to be long winded. So I wanted it to be its own like separate thing. And I just want to end this video with, I get it. I'm fat. I, I know. And it has caused me a lot of issues in my life. But instead of assuming that whatever I'm going through is because of my size, let's like figure out what the issue is first and then we can figure that out. I'm sorry for like that little mini rant. I guess it really was just bothering me. I know my words probably aren't going to matter so much. They usually don't. But I think it just feels better that it's off of my chest. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right. Well, like I said, I don't know why we got that little mini rant about her being more than her weight and not everything being the fault of weight, which she's right. It's not always. And people, the whole, you know, not being healthy at every size, the whole movement was started because they wanted people in larger bodies to be able to get health care and not be looked at just because of their weight. Not a, I'm healthy at any size because that's just not true for a lot of people. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think I left that video a little more confused about what her actual thoughts are as far as the cancer. Um, so I, I guess we need to wait for the CT scan and she's blaming herself, but not her weight. So I don't know what else she could possibly be blaming herself for when it comes to cancer. Now, again, being overweight is a risk factor 
for uterine cancer, but, you know, it's not the reason exactly why. I mean, anybody can get cancer. It's just, it's the way the world is. It's the way, way life is. Um, you know, things happen, shit happens, unfortunately. Um, but... I guess all that being said, I don't know what else to say on that one. We'll, we'll, we'll get on into the next one here shortly, but I hope you all have an amazing weekend. Be safe and all that jazz. Um, I was going to say be safe over the long weekend, and then I almost started my <laughs> my closing. Um, if you could do all the YouTube stuff for me, like and subscribe, all that, I would appreciate it. And until next time, be safe and take care.